ready for kickoff. Delphus Jefferson, Delphus St. John's, a great matchup here once again in the Delphus Bowl, Champions Field at Stadium Park. I'm so happy you could join us here today. Jefferson, the home team this year in red. They will move left to right as you watch it. And St. John's in the visiting white. The opening kickoff returned up the far side and great return and just knocked out of bounds there. At the end of the play was Connor Gaynor. Great field position for the Blue Jays as they'll start just across the 40. And Gaynor with the return up to the 40 yard line. And so that is where St. John's will start. Of course, this is a team that likes to operate out of the shotgun, Corey, and they'll mix the pass and the run in, but a very versatile offense for Coach Schulte once again this year. Quarterback back this year again for the Blue Jays, so offense should be clicking. Run. And they're going to try and cut right and cut down in the backfield for a short loss, the opening carry of the game. Nolan Schwinnen, of course, the quarterback handing that one off. And nothing doing there on that first run. Really nice play by the backside defensive end there, number 87, Tanner Voorhees. And so it will be second down and 10. Quarterback. Coming near side and not much doing. Good. Two very minimal games to start off here this contest. And it's Podubny, no gain on that first play. And then just a gain of one there on the next play for Nolan Schwinnen. Jeff Katz really flying to the football early on here. And it's already a third and long here for Schwinnen. Coming back from a fine season, not just throwing the football, but running the football as well. Third and nine for the Blue Jays. Back to throw, Schwinnen looks left, throws left, and a risky throw, and it's incomplete. Broken up at the last second there by Braylon Scalf. He broke up the pass over there on that left side, intended for Grant Ohm, and it's third down, make it fourth down and nine. About the 25. So just like that, there you go. Jeff Katz flying around there, breaking up a pass and getting a quick stop. Couldn't have pictured a better start for the defense to start the season. And a punt. We'll be punting it away, the Blue Jays. Miller and Scalf are back deep. And Scalf will call the fair catch at their own 26 yard line as that's where Jefferson will start this offensive series. And of course, uh, Trent Tiemann, the captain, 6'4", senior. He's gonna be a bit imposing out there. You can't really miss him in the huddle, but a big part of what Jefferson is going to try and do offensively in 2022 with his ability to make smart decisions. I know they're Coach for the Jefferson is very excited about the running back, Cole Horston, back there. Really likes his speed. Always says he's a threat to take it to the distance. And they throw it out right. Scalf the catch and up to the 31 yard line. And a moderate gain there up to the 31, gain of four. But that's a nice drive starter for the Jeff Cats. Great way to get the confidence going for Team in there. Easy roll out there to his left. Easy completion. Good pickup for the Jeff Gats to get things going here on first down. Yeah. Yes, yes. It'll be second down and six. A very dynamic attack back this year for Jefferson. This is a modest run up the middle for team and not much going there. Although it was able to at least push it slightly forward. And it'll be third down and five, gain of just one for Teeman. Nice job by the middle of the Blue Jay defense there to shed some blockers and get to the quarterback there. Of course, Trent Teeman, a starting linebacker and wide receiver last year. And moving over to the QB position to lead the way. Blitz coming on third and five. Look at that speed. Teeman has the edge. 40, Teeman 50. Teeman with another gear and turned down at the 32 yard line as he was exploding through the St. John's defense. 
And able to gallop all the way down to the 32 yard line for a first down. Excellent job there by Jefferson. Teeman saw the blitz coming, offensive line did a great job to give him some room and he made a great read to get outside the pocket there and scamper for a big time Jeff Cap first down. From 32 to 32, that's a 36 yard run for Teeman. So you have to check out the guy's arm, he can throw it and then he just takes off along the edge and has just lightning quick feet. Hand off here, nice cut back. Breaks another tackle and down at the 20 yard line. That was a great run for Hurston. And Hurston has a first down up to the 20 yard line. And we are seeing the first downs come a plenty now here on this opening drive. For an offense that really, really played well last year, it doesn't look like they skipped the beat on the first drive of the 2022 season. Another Union Bank first down. Union Bank committed to you. And that was 12 more yards on that run there moments ago from Hurston. And in the red zone now are the Jeff Cats. Hurston 10, man in motion, and uh, nothing doing there as that is thrown back. Andrew Miller, play was blown up down below there by Jake Boniface, made a nice stop, exploding into the backfield and a loss of three. Just what? Delphi St. John's needed there. They needed a little pressure. Get Jefferson behind the sticks here on second down. Today's scoreboard brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Served up by Lee's Famous Re Recipe Chicken, of course, in Delphi and Wapak. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens. And I'll be second and 13 now for Teeman. And the Wildcats roll left to throw, lobs it out there, single coverage, and a flag thrown in the end zone. A pass intended for Andrew Miller, but he was hauled down by Gaynor, and that's going to be a penalty, and some yardage going in favor of Jefferson. And it will be close to a first down, although this deep into Blue Jays territory it should not be the full 15. So they'll put it at the 11 and a half, which makes sense. Half the distance to the goal. And Je the first penalty of the game. Douglas Jefferson again rolled that pocket to the left. Went with a wheel route that time. And good looking ball. Good physical defense in the corner. Just a little, little tug there at the end fighting for the football. Good effort by both guys. And after a couple nice runs, why not? Yeah, Bob take, the a, end zone. take a shot there. You're a little behind the sticks there on second and 12. Second down and two now from the 11. And they'll give it off to the tailback. They'll mix and match. Carter Agner with that carry. But he lost just a little bit of ground there. Back to the 12. Nolan Schwinnen in the backfield there for the Blue Jays. Hurry up here for the Jeff Cats on third and short. Straight up the middle for... Teeman. Yeah, and Teeman was able to get it up to the nine. Smart carry there for Teeman. Just didn't let the defense get set. And that's another Union Bank first down. Union Bank committed to you. And so, first and goal now at the nine. With that clock running, five minutes. Uh, clock not running, now it is. As we are more than five minutes gone in this opening quarter. Teeman in the gun. Has his running back Hurston with him and no sledding there. To the 10, that's going to be a loss of a yard. And they're trying to pile that run inside and the Blue Jays a couple times as the field is shortened and tightened near the red zone. They've also tightened up in the in between the tackles. Yeah, they just couldn't get that counter action to work there. Right in there between the center and the guard. Second and goal from the 10. Team in to throw. Lobs end zone. And it's a little tall for Andrew Miller. Senior receiver was open. Just missed the intended target. That was a nice late slant route there in the end zone. Just a slight misconnection. And it's third and goal from the 10. Yeah, great patience in the pocket. Waited for his target, just missed him there. So big third down here. 
And you love, too, how the offensive line held up there against the blitz. Blue Jays were bringing it, but couldn't quite convert that pass. Third goal from the 10 for Tiemann. Three receivers all to the right. And a tight end on the right side of that line as well. The roll team in. Pressure comes. Has room. Throws. Corner of the end zone. That is a touchdown for Andrew Miller. He hauls it in. A low throw close to the ground. A nice ball to the corner. And Jefferson strikes first to make it 6-0. What a throw by Trent Tiemann right at the pylon. Put it in a place where only his wide receiver, Andrew Miller, was going to catch it. And the Jeff Cats were going to take an early 6 0 lead. And a nice 11 play drive yields positive results for the Jeff Cats as they get on the board first. And took them nearly five minutes to do it. And the extra point up and through from Raylan Scout. To break time. 7 0 Jefferson in the lead on the Lee's famous recipe chicken scoreboard on WOSN. <laughs> 11 plays, 74 yards in 4 minutes and 38 seconds. The Delphus Jefferson Wildcats striking a 10 yard touchdown pass from Trent Tiemann to Andrew Miller. And just like that, the Jeff Cats lead it 7-0 in their rivalry battle with St. John's. A very determined drive, Corey. Drive number one, a complete success for the Wildcats. Well, on Monday morning when Coach Rarig sat down with his staff and he game planned this out tonight, I don't think he could have pictured it any better. Three and out on defense, opening drive, you march right down the field and score. 7-0 halfway through the first quarter. Perfect. Perfect start for Jefferson. Touchdowns tonight brought to you by Leland Smith Insurance Services. Your first call for all your insurance needs. And that's our first touchdown of the night. And a pooch kick to the 20. Hoping to cut it back towards the inside. And he will be corralled there, Clay Dubney. And taken down. And so we will see this next drive start for the Blue Jays who struggled mightily in that opening drive to get anything going, went three and out. Now we'll see if they can find something here and start to move the chains. Drive number two. Nolan Schwinnen worked to lead the way. Three receivers left, one to the right. Some early motion, and that's going to go against Clay Padubny, who moved early. Couldn't sell it for a motion there. It was a little... Uh, no, it looked late. like you, his momentum wanted to take him there in motion. He probably should have just trusted himself and went there. And, but unfortunate there. It'll be first and 15 now for the Blue Jays. And don't want to play behind the chains. And that's what they'll do, at least for the moment. Schwinnin will keep it himself, hoping to use Podubny as a blocker. That didn't work out. Jefferson kind of inside of that defensive line, swallowing everything up. Looked like a little miscommunication in the backfield. Looked like maybe a handoff. Padubny thought maybe a handoff there. Schwinnen thought maybe just a dive. Got crossed up there. And Delphi's second drive here, not off to a very good start, but hopefully they can rebound here on second down and 14. From good discipline 34. right there by Jefferson as they went the hard count there. Great job by the defensive line. I'd love to get that five yards back if you could. Not able to succeed that time. Second and 14, Schwinnin. And nice stop there at the 36 yard line. And not much doing. Agner right there, Cardner Agner right there in the gap, the sophomore linebacker. Filled in the gap nicely, made the big tackle. Will be third down and 12 from the 36. St. John's trying to avoid going three and out, two straight drives to start the game. Schwinnin to throw. 
time, tons of time. Throws and it's caught at the 45, but a little bit short of the line to gain at the 46. Nathan Ditto the catch, and the senior worked his way up to two yards short of the first down. Actually, they'll give him even a better spot to the 47. It's fourth down, and now it's decision time for the Blue Jays. Yeah. You gotta go for it here, don't you? I would think so. You're right at midfield. See if you can't get a good push from up front. And it's a big play early. Now it's the first oh, quarter. This little. is a huge play for momentum's sake. And a timeout will be taken by the Blue Jays. Smartly done with 3.50 to go in the opening quarter. 7-0 Jefferson. We'll be right back on WOSA. Our first quarter is made possible by Charles River in Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. Corey, don't miss the Ren Riffle Ball tradition either. Monday night, 8 p.m., tune into WSM for the pageantry and spectacle that is Ren Riffle Ball. Biggest little game on earth, only on WSN Monday at 8. If I had access, I certainly would check check yeah. it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it's exciting stuff. Full disclosure, I don't have WSN at home, but I could could ask for a tape. I'm excited to check it out. I love the names out there. The <laughs> eager beavers are my favorite. Fourth and goal from the 47. Fourth and one from the 47. My apologies. Huge play here. Two backs in the backfield with Schwinnin. And that pistol look and nice forward momentum. Podubny, he's gone. 30, 20, 10, see ya. On fourth and goal from, fourth and one from the 47. He turned it into more than a goal to go situation. He went all the way. A touchdown for the Blue Jays and it's 7-6. Great job by the Blue Jay front. Handled the, handled the loaded box that Jefferson threw at him. Podubny made the safety miss and he was off to the house. Big bounce back drive there by the Blue Jays, especially. I think it was a third and 13, and they got back to fourth and manageable there and hit it with a big play there. 53 yards on the run, capping off the four play drive for the Blue Jays. And they punch it in. And the extra point is up and good. We have a 7-7 tie on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard served up by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Delphus and Wapak. While Lee's for all your catering needs, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens. Another touchdown presented by Leland Smith Insurance Services. Your first call for all your insurance needs. Well, Mr. Corey Britton, that is a response. Four plays, 62 yards, two minutes and 10 seconds, and the dangerous play Podubny. You knew he would strike at some time, and he had a full head of steam barreling through the middle there, broke a tackle, and that was it. If you're Coach Schulte, you gotta be uh, very, very pleased with your Blue Jays right there, and those are what seniors do. You have a senior quarterback, makes a big time throw on third and long, and then you have a senior running back who, who makes a man miss on a big fourth down early in a football game and takes it to the house and ties the game against your rival from across town. And all of a sudden, we got another great ball game here on Saturday night in week one. TV 44 is celebrating its 40th anniversary this year in WOSN. As part of that celebration, if you donate $40 as a thank you for 40 years of local broadcasting in this region, donate online at WTLW.com forward slash donate or call 419-339-4444. Just has a different feel after that touchdown run, doesn't it? It seemed, it, It's not like the game's hanging into balance with 350 left in the opening quarter, but when you have an atmosphere like this one is, a rivalry game, you just felt like that was such an important conversion for St. John's and they had much more than just a conversion on that fourth and one. And he kicked off return to the 34 by Cody Bailey and Jefferson will try and strike now offensively. Their first drive was a successful one in which they took 438 off the clock, 11 plays, 74 yards and they scored a touchdown. And just to touch on your point, Kevin, I mean, confidence is such a big thing in high school athletics, and 
And you talk about Delphi St. John's a start. You go three and out, give up a touchdown drive to Delphi St. or Delphi Jefferson, and then you go false start. You go backwards, and all of a sudden it's third and 13, and you complete a pass, and you get a big touchdown run, and all of a sudden, boom, boatload of confidence, and you got a little momentum. And let's see if they can keep the momentum here and on defense. Trent Tiemann will start in the gun as a back on his right hip. First and 10, and he's going to throw down the middle. Has his man, but no, it was dropped by Cody Bailey. He was open, too, and might have been off to the races with a throw just a little offline from Tiemann. Perfect play fake there, but the throw not quite on target. That blitz from the Blue Jays just threw off the timing just a hair. If he had a little, maybe a half more second, I think you're right. I think that pass completed for a long touchdown. Rich Heil, our center judge, was able to see it right away, even with the receivers back to him, able to call that an incompletion. That's not an easy call when the receiver's shielding you from the football. Second and 10, Tiemann, he is swallowed up at the 25, hauled down by multiple Blue Jays for a sack. And Jefferson moving backwards, eight yards. Looks like Delvis St. John's is really bringing the heat here, this possession defensively. Another strong blitz as Delphus Jefferson rolled the pocket out and uh, the middle linebacker there came right into the, into the mix and got the sack. Third and 18 from the 26. Under three minutes to go in the opening stanza. Team in alone sends his man scalf, scalf in motion, wide open man, there he goes. Carter Agner, bye bye. 74 yard touchdown strike on third and 18, and it's 13 7. They faked the jet sweep to Braylon Scalf. Teeman hit a wide open Carter. Carter Agner, the sophomore, streaking down the middle of the field, and a monster response. Another big third down completion in this football game, and we're still here late in the first quarter. This game's starting to fly off the rails quick with points, two for two, scoring drives now. And Scalf punches through the PAT. 14-7 the score. Now with 2.38 to go in this opening quarter. Scoreboard served up by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Delphus and Wapak. All Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken where home style happens. Touchdowns presented by Leland Smith Insurance Services, your first call for all your insurance needs. A lot of touchdowns early, and we are not even 10 minutes into this game, and we already have three of them. And Jefferson, two for two on their drives. Again, seemed that that drive was hanging into balance and was destined for a disaster and a potential punt. What does Jefferson do? They get a receiver running wide open. Carter Agner down the middle. And Tiemann, the play fake again, able to create. And the receiver, of course, slips the defensive back, and off he goes. Excellent play call by the Jefferson coaching staff. They must have saw something from up top in the box. They ran that jet, fake the jet sweep, sent the motion. You got the defense to slide and slip the tight end straight up the middle of the field. And wide open touchdown for the, for the Wildcats. We're now accepting nominations for the John Reed Leadership Award. Nominate coaches who exemplify Christian character, humility, discipline, mentorship, leadership, commitment to others, and excellence on the field. Nominations can be made at WOSN.TV forward slash John Reed. Pretty simple drive summary there. Three plays, 66 yards, 54 seconds off the clock. Braylon Scalf, the PAT, after the 74-yard touchdown from Tiemann to Agner. And this kickoff's going OB. And a flag will fly. They'll set up St. John's with good field position. Start this drive. First marker against Jefferson today. First time you're getting to take in the Delphus Bowl, Corey, and it's living up to the hype so far. It's a great game. Great game, great facility, too. Really, really prideful uh, school communities. Uh, never been to uh, Stadium Park and Champions Field. And beautiful facility, very, very impressive. Um, a lot of 
a lot of pride on the line tonight, and you can definitely tell in the atmosphere. Both schools definitely want this one to take back to their to their respective schools. It'd be a great way to start this new school year. And St. John's electing to take the penalty here, so Jefferson will have to kick the ball off further in their own territory. At the 35 instead. St. John's would have elected that penalty, they would have gotten it from the 35. However, on their last two returns, they've gotten it almost to the 40 yard line each time, so playing the odds here that they can get it all the way up probably past the 40. Let me try again. Low driving boot, that was a pretty solid kick to the 23, and plenty of room, far side, and there he goes! St. John's counters, Connor Gaynor is gone, and it's 14-13. Great call, making him re-kick it. Back-to-back, wow. -back very impressive coaching decisions. We got the play call from Delphus Jefferson on the long passing touchdown, and Coach Schulte making him re-kick it and taking it back to the to the crib, as they would say, on the long touchdown. Well, last year, we only saw 42 points in this game. We've seen 27, could be 28 already. We're not even 10 minutes in. What a start. This is what they would like to call a good old fashioned shootout. Yeah. <laughs> 78 yard touchdown return by Gaynor. And so that the only, I guess, down part you could say, Blue Jays defense has to go right back on the field. But the PAT up and good. And it was just like that. Back to all square. 14 apiece. 226 to go in the opening quarter. Touchdowns. All of them tonight presented by Leland Smith Insurance Services. Your first call for all your insurance needs. Lee's famous recipe chicken scoreboard reading 14-14 now here at Champions Field at Stadium Park. Mark Labor Day on your calendar, the second annual LifeWise 5K presented by the Tom All family of dealerships. The race begins at the Sunnydale House where LifeWise Elida begins its second year. We have more to celebrate as the launch of academies in Allen East and Spencerville take place in September. Sign up, Google Elida LifeWise 5K and follow the link to runsignup.com. Simple drive summary. There was no drive summary. Kickoff return for a touchdown. And St. John's with the big play of their own able to capitalize. So we've seen a 53-yard run by Podubny. Gainer's 78-yard kickoff return. We've seen a 36-yard run by Teeman today. That was not a touchdown. That was on the first drive, though, for Jefferson. The 74-yard pass from Teeman to Carter Agner for the touchdown. That's big plays of plenty early on. But it almost seemed like too, Corey, that St. John's was on the precipice of doing that. Their kick coverage was solid through the first couple. There's another missed tackle here and a nice return out to the 40. And Andrew Miller spilled there. Late penalty flag coming in. Flag, yep, right in the middle of the field at the 33. And that's going to be on Jefferson and back them up. It's going to take away some great field position there for Jefferson. Yep, there's the block in the back call. We'll see where they march it off from. If it is that 33-yard line, that'll push them inside the 30. Blocking it back. It's a tough call to go against the Jeff Cats. Will be a longer field. And they march it back to the 27. That's where this drive will begin for Jefferson. So St. John's in particular, you had Jefferson on the ropes that last drive. You allowed the 74-yard touchdown pass. And the first drive was a dominating one for the Wildcats. Any early adjustments you've seen here from St. John's on this drive? Well, ho hopefully you just tack that last long touchdown up to a missed assignment. And you can fix that missed assignment and, and go back to basic football, fundamental football, and, and make plays. Not much.
yardage there, a one yard run to start off this drive. And just so important to stay at home and not lose your man in coverage. St. John's there stuck with it, made a nice stop. Second and nine from the 29. A pair of receivers left for Teeman. And he's gonna hand it off. Miller trying to bide himself some time and he no cannot. Push. Nothing out there. Great job from the backside by number 55 there for the Blue Jays. Jake Boniface once again, he's made a couple stops early. Grant Holm came up to help as well. And that's no gain. And here we are again, Delphi St. John's has Jefferson in a long third down situation. And both defenses had both offenses in long third downs, yet neither team has been able to force a punt. Let's see if we can get somebody off the field here tonight. Third and nine from their own 29. Team in, throws left, Has and him. Him is behind his man, and he still made the catch. Great job by Braylon Scalf to reach back and make the catch at the 49, a gain of 20, and a Union Bank first down. Union Bank committed to you. Teeman waited perfectly until Scalf could get in front of that safety and put it right there, and Scalf reached behind him and made a great play, great catch. Nothing wrong with the cover, just a better play by the offensive player. That was not an easy snag to make, and Braylon found a way. First and 10 from the 49. And team in the keeper, and he's hitting the backfield. He's still driving his legs forward. And right on the hash mark, he'll be taken down at the 50. He did well to gain a yard out of that. Yeah, he was hit about two yards deep in the backfield and was able to drive, drive a couple Blue Jay defenders to get a positive yards. Yeah, we talk about the speed that he has, but he has a lot of strength in those legs too. And we saw that kept churning upfield to get a yard. And that may be the end of the quarter. Both teams kind of standing pat here, and it will. We will head to break. And an exciting first quarter it was here in the Delphus Bowl, Champions Field at Stadium Park. Jefferson 14, St. John's 14. Second quarter action next on WOSN. Our second quarter is made possible by Charles River in Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Serving up our scoreboard tonight in Delphus and Wapak. You can find Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens. We're tied at 14 to the second quarter. Team and hands it off to Miller, and he gets bottled up. In the backfield for a loss of a yard. Really good pressure there by number 50, Camden Schaefer there. Made a great stop. Yes. That'll be third and 10. Senior linebacker there came up, got good pressure, made the tackle. And again, another third long. Kevin Peel, Corey Britton with you here in the booth. Our entire fantastic WOSN crew welcoming you to Champions Field at Stadium Park. Second Delphus Bowl between Jefferson and St. John's. Taman throws it out there as a wide open man. It's Miller, catches it at the 31. Miller couldn't quite beat the one man there down the far sideline, but makes the catch and gets up to the 21 for a Union Bank first down. Union Bank committed to you. Taman with another beautiful throw. Jefferson rolled the pocket a little bit and came back to the wheel route to the opposite side of the rollout and found a wide open Miller streaking down that right sideline. Beautiful throw, great call. First and 10. 30 yards from team into Miller on third down and long. First and 10 from the 21 and a whistle. Got some movement up front it looks like there. And it's a false start on Jefferson. Their second penalty, including the kickoff penalty they had earlier today. Great officiating crew, by the way, here tonight. Mark Sisko, our referee. Marcus Zink, the umpire. Preston Carr, linesman. Tom Sharp, line judge. Greg Kramer, back judge. And Rich Heil, the center judge here today. Now a little bit behind the sticks. First and 15 are the Jeff Cats. Teeman to throw. Open man again, caught there by Bailey. Cody Bailey, Paters. Touchdown, Wildcats. 
and another touchdown through the air for Teeman. Welcome to your starting quarterback duties. Three passing touchdowns to start this game. Great play action pass. Fake the handoff, slant route, hit him straight in stride. Beautiful play call, great execution by Jefferson and another touchdown here. And another successful drive. They are just marching up and down the field now at this juncture. And scouts extra point off the upright, no good. And he pulled it left. And it's no good. So first maybe miscue you see of the night from Jefferson other than a couple defensive mishaps. But another successful drive and another touchdown. Touchdowns presented by Leland Smith Insurance Services tonight. Your first call for all your insurance needs. And the Lee's famous recipe chicken scoreboard now is 20 to 14 in favor of Jefferson. And again, it just seems like the deception in the backfield, the option, you hand it off or you keep it and throw. It just seems like St. John's is struggling to catch on to what Trent Tiemann's trying to do and he's finding receivers running all alone. A lot of misdirection right now from Delphus Jefferson on the offensive side of the ball. Rolling one way, throwing back the other. Um, pulling the guard one way, throwing the football the other. Delphus Jefferson, or St. John's right now, struggling to pick it up, pick their keys up on the defensive side of the football. I'm sure it's something that they'll pick up at halftime, make some adjustments on right now, but currently the Wildcats are, are playing really well and, and having a, taking a lot of advantage right now of that Blue Jay defense. Full-blown shootout in this opening right, half. Yeah, right. Jefferson to kick yeah, it away. On punt, easy first reveal their formation until right before the kick. Let's see if they squib this one last time that was taken for a long touchdown. Matt Weitzel to send it away. Junior lineman. And a low boot, heading out of bounds. And He's what the there. Jeff Cats are saying is to that brush, a Blue Jay on the way out. Looks like it avoided everyone, but that kickoff went out at the 38. Choice for Coach Schultze here. He can take it at the 38, 37. They're going to re-kick it. Where's Luke? Get Luke in there. He's in there. Make sure he knows what and he's doing. And the anticipation mounts here as they will move it back five yards and re-kick. Well, last time, as we saw the kickoff return for a touchdown by Gaynor, it was actually a pretty nice kick from Weitzel. But when the distance along the far sideline scoring that touchdown for the Blue Jays, Looks like Braylon Scalp will now kick off here for Jefferson. I'm going to make a little bit of a change. Now Weitzel has kicked it out of bounds twice now. So going to go to Scalp. That's a strong boot. And that's going all the way back into the end zone, in fact. A touchback. Braylon Scalf, and that was being five yards even further back. An impressive boot. So it'll be from their own 25 starting off here for St. John's with 10.30 to go in the second quarter. Nearly made it on the fly, one bounce into the end zone or so. A very strong kick. So that almost makes you wonder, knowing you have the leg you do in Scalf trying to use that deception when they bring Weitzel out for those kickoffs. Sometimes with small rosters, it's just about giving yeah. some of those better athletes just that quick blow right. when you got all those minutes you got to play, so. That too. And Schwinnen, they're not able to get a play in. They'll take a timeout. 
10.30 to go in the second quarter. We'll take one, two. 20 to 14, East Phoenix Recipe Chicken scoreboard on WOSF. All first downs tonight brought to you by Union Bank. Union Bank is committed to you. Lee's famous recipe chicken scoreboard 20 to 14. St. John's trailing Jefferson in this Delphus Bowl. Second time out of the half used by Coach Schulte. And both of them on offense, although one was before a 53 yard touchdown run by Clay Dubney earlier. Schwinn in here with a nice run to start this drive up to the 26 yard line and a gain of five. First option look we've seen from the Blue Jays tonight. Came to the near side of the field there and looked like he could have pitched it if he needed to, but cut it up. Picked up five or six there. Second and a long four. We gave him nearly six on the run. Under 10 to go in the half. Run. And off the dummy on, wrap up, wrap up, wrap up. and pushed back. Going low to make the stop there was Logan Murray, senior linebacker. Drove him back into the backfield. And no gain. Maybe a modest gain. They will give him a modest gain to the 27. It's third and three. Break Dubney, a tough guy to drive back in that manner. Third down. Schwinnin in the pistol. Dumney behind him looks to the far sideline for the play call. Yeah, they got a tight end. And looking left, throws left. Nice little slant route and a catch for a Union Bank first down. Nice Bank route. Committed to you. Four yard game. Good route there by Ditto to pick up the first down. Schwinnin put it right on the numbers. Good execution there by the Blue Jays to, give, to keep the drive alive. And just had a little space there on that far sideline. Jefferson giving him a couple yards off the line of scrimmage, and Nathan Ditto capitalized on that. First and 10 at the 31. St. John's moves the chains. Right in this way. Pistol with two backs in the backfield. Pedumny, extra blocker, sifting his way through to the 37. Just picking where he wants to go. Makes a nice gain there up to the 37. Tanner Voorhees the stop. And that's second and four. Good push by the Blue Jay front there. Another positive start to, the, to a first down. Hard count there, great discipline again by the Jeff Cat uh, defensive line. St. John's needs a drive of some length. Explain in a minute after this second down play. Schwinn in, cuts up, and will have a first down. Up to the 44-yard line. Finally tackled there by Trent Tiemann. Also was able to shoot off some contact there from Logan Murray. And it's a first down. Gain of seven on the play. Good power football there. That's. That's what I like to call old school St. John football there. The power sweep with the stacked backfield with Pudney and the lead blocker, number 45, um, back there leading for the quarterback, pulling guard, have a convoy in front of them, pick up good first down yardage. From the 44, two receivers right, one left. And Pedubny able to bounce out, lost the ball, and then gave it right to his receiver. And at the 49, he'll be taken down. A big time break there. Braylon, Braylon Metzger. Metzger saved the day and ended up with a positive play of five. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Right into his hands. <laughs> Dodged a bullet there. Well, the main question is, Pedubny did all the early yardage work there, but fumbled the ball away to Metzger. So Metzger officially gets the five yard run. Second and five. On the 49, nearing midfield, Schwinning goes with a hard count. Now looks to the sideline. St. John's, their first two drives, a minute 22, two minutes 10 seconds. Quarterback, quarterback, Schwinning quarterback, keeps, quarterback. and nothing. 
Jefferson was all over that. It just seemed like there was a lot of commotion in the backfield and really nowhere for him to go. 64, Matt Wetzel's not going to get credit for a tackle there, but he was the one that caused that commotion. He, he was the first one into the backfield and blew that play up and allowed his teammates to corral the ball carrier. Third and five from the 49. Halfway through the second. And we have a whistle and a false start on St. John's. That'll be their third penalty of the game, and that is in a less than ideal spot to do it. Setting up for a big third and five, now it's a third and 10. They roll the clock. That changes your play strategy just a little bit. Probably have to go to the air now. Third and five, yeah, you pick up three, you might be looking at a first down, or a, a, a four down territory there. Schwinnen rolling, throwing, Schwinnen downfield, man to man coverage, oh, the catch made! And a house call for Connor Gaynor. Touchdown, 56 yards, and they were tied at 20. Throw it up for grabs, you never know what could happen. What a throw, on the run? 40 yards in the air on a dot. Right on the money. Nolan Schwinnen to Gainer. Touchdown, Blue Jays. And that was a big time play. 5.34 to go in the half. Two huge plays now for him. High snap. Extra point. Finds its way through. Great job by Schwinnen to get that ball on the tee. Just made it through. And St. John's has their first lead of the game, 21-20, 5.34 to go in this opening half on WOSA. And another touchdown, Connor Gagne making the Phenomenal catch, 56 yards on the throw from Schwinnen to make it 21-20. These famous recipe chicken serving up our scoreboard today. These famous recipe chicken in Delphus and Wapak. Call Lee's for all your catering needs where home style happens. And the kickoff from the 15. He'll take this one, trying to go wide Miller, and he spilled at the 31. So that is where Jefferson will start this next drive. And boy, what an interesting scenario if you're Jefferson here because you're three for three, touchdown drives, yet you find yourself down a point as to feel quite strange at this juncture to be down a point. However, you still have to keep going to the well and doing the big things that you have been doing throughout this first half offensively. You gotta stay with the offensive game plan. It's been working. You don't want to stray too far away from it, and stay with the misdirection, the, the RPO type action that you've been running, and keep clicking because your offense has definitely been doing that. First and ten from the thirty-one, and kept it. Teeman and his jersey torn there. Damn to Schaefer, saying, nope, you're not going to get very far. Only a gain of one for Teeman on first down. And what was so important, I think, about that last drive in particular was just utilizing some time, taking some time off the clock, almost a five-minute drive for St. John's to get down the field and doing so in 80 yards. Option. Plays. Here's an option play. Good job to turn it up and get some yardage there by Teeman. To the 35. Third and six now. St. John's has been on the field a lot of this first half defensively. Senses an opportunity to get off the field. But this is where Jefferson has excelled on third downs at this point in the game. Third and six. A lot of misdirection type action on third downs from Delphus Jefferson in this game. 
whether it's rollouts and throwing back the other way. Let's see if they stay with that type of action. No deep safeties. Team in to throw. Pressure instantaneously throws. And I think they're going to call it incomplete. It is. Yeah, he was able to at least try the throwing motion. Did get that arm going forward. An incompletion. And decision time now for Jefferson. I thought that was a pretty good call. I thought he stepped up into the pocket and tried to get that ball away. Good quick whistle that way. There was no miscommunication on anybody's part. Good job by the official there. St. John's a one point lead and is fourth and six. The play clock already down to 10 for Jefferson. No, we got somebody. Scalf is the man ready to punt and a timeout taken by Jefferson, which will be their first taken of the half. Clock is still running. Clock's running. And the clock was running at that juncture, so they'll have to readjust, put some time back on with a little over four minutes to go in the second quarter. What questions do you have about life, about God, about things happening in your community or family? Get answers when you watch Life Questions. Each week, four local pastors will discuss relevant topics and answer questions submitted by people just like you. Life Questions is on TV 44 Sundays at 1.30 and Wednesdays at 9.30 p.m. You can also find it online at WTLW.com. So Gagne, who's had play upon play, early on through this first half is back deep to return this kick along with Braylon Metzger for St. John's. We've seen just about everything in this game right now, Kevin. We've seen a long touchdown run, long touchdown passes, special teams plays, and our first punt tonight. Just about 20 minutes in, so. A three and out. Gets it away, nice punt by Scalf. Gagne calling for the fair catch at the 33 and makes it. He's got to stay outside. So 3.56 to go in the second quarter. And St. John's trying to add on to their lead in a 21-20 game. Let's see if St. John's can't put another long drive together here and cap it off going into halftime here. It'd be an ideal situation for the Blue Jays. Plus this game re-airing Sunday night, 7 o'clock on WLSN. Make sure to tune in and catch it. It's been a great one so far. That's when you're watching it right now. First and 10 from the 33. Schwinnen will hand it off to Dubney outside and tripped up at the 39. Nearly had more, but that's a change that I'm starting to see as this first half has gone along. The running game is just slowly starting to get going and that's really starting to breed success for St. John's as we saw on that last eight play 80 yard drive on the previous timeout. They're starting to get a good push up front. Maybe wearing down a little bit on that front. Delphus Jefferson was really, really flying around early. They're not flying around nearly as hard right, that, right now. Second and four. And Schwinnen will keep it and get a first down up to the 44. That's a Union Bank first down. Union Bank committed to you. Gain of five. Schwinnen just following his blocks nicely. Still plenty of time, although one thing to consider, Blue Jays only with one timeout. They used two earlier in the half different offensive sequences. First and 10, Schwinnen throws and lobs one incomplete. Just a little bit high, intended for Nathan Ditto. Going wide on a corner route, second and 10. Fake the slant there, tried to get the out route. Uh, Ditto just over overshot him there. Good, good design, just missed him. Second and 10 from the 44. Ball in the middle of the field. Schwinnen snap to him, and he'll run. He's got room. Midfield, breaks a tackle. Up the sideline, Schwinnen's still going, and then ran out of bounds. 
just lost his footing a bit, tight roping the sideline. Another Union Bank first down. Union Bank committed to you. Nolan Schwinnen is getting stronger and running harder as this first half has progressed. Very, very physical runner right now. Very impressive. Seventeen yard gain for Schwinnen. And he helps the Blue Jays move the chains. Two and thirty-nine to go in the half. Four receivers set. Stretching it out for Schwinnen. And a handoff here, trying to go wide and blasted was Metzger. Right the line of scrimmage. Really lowered the boom, but Metzger was able to get back to the line of scrimmage because they didn't bring him down right away. Logan Murray and Zach Who there on a big hit there on the big collision on the jet sweep action. After no gain, second and ten. He's out wide on number two. Staring at the sideline now. Sending his man in motion. It's Ditto in motion. Schwinnen, right. Around the corner, cuts back, 35-30, Schwinnen still going. And down to the 23. It's Voorhees with the stop. And another Union Bank first down. They'll give him the 25. And a quick injury stoppage. Down on the field. We will step aside. 148 to go in the half. 21-20, St. John's leads Jefferson on WOSN. We're back here. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard served up by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Delphi's and Wampak. Well, Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens. 21-20. St. John's leading Jefferson, a strange incident. Uh, had Cody Bailey down for a brief amount of time. He actually has a face mask stuck on his elbow. In the chaos of that play, his elbow somehow got wedged in a face mask, and he has to go to the locker room to get taken off. Now he's walking off fine with some help from the training staff, but still a bit of a scary moment for Bailey, hopefully he's okay. We're back to action, first and 10 from the 25, and Schwinnen will race ahead near the 15. He's tackled, but a flag did come out at the 23 yard line on the near side, and that will be a holding call against the Blue Jays. Looks like Delva St. John's found something that they like with this power run game here late in this first half. Their fourth penalty of the game. And instead of nearly a first down, move it back to the 33 yard line. Fourth drive of this game for St. John's punt, touchdown. Also had a kickoff return from Gagne mixed in there. Touchdown and this long drive. But we're only down to a minute remaining in the half and just one timeout for St. John's. So they're going to have to hurry things up just a tad. And all the way down to the end of the play clock to throw Schwinnen. Tons of time. Steps up. Runs. Schwinnen 25 barrels a defender and taken down at the 21. As he lowered the boom on Carter Agner, who was just able to make the tackle. Gain of 12 up to the 21. Good physical run. Timeout taken there. Good physical run by Schwinn in there, and great job by Agner to hang on there and make the tackle, because I don't think if he held on, I don't know if there was anybody that was going to stop Schwinn in between him and the end zone there. So, Really just knows how to dissect a defense when he takes off using his feet. Great vision as well as a running back, and that makes him and team and so lethal when they break out and get on the run. The free WOSN Scores app is the easiest way to follow local high school sports. No one covers more schools, more sports, and more scores than WOSN. Search WOSN in the App Store or Android Play Store today. Of course, approaching halftime, the pageantry of 
this night. Champions Field Stadium Park, the entire town of Delphus coming together for a great football game. Treated to a phenomenal game last year. And so far this year, it has not disappointed. It has lived up to the hype. One point lead for the Blue Jays and driving late in the half. And they have no more timeouts to use. So Schwinnin has to be smart with his decision making. Because that clock's going to turn. Second down, and lofts it up there, and incomplete. Just out of the reach of Gagne, who's been Mr. Big Play all evening already, and just missed him, third and eight. Good looking ball, just outside the outreached hands of him there. Long third down opportunity here, a big stop right here. Swing the momentum on the side of Jefferson, heading into halftime if they can get one. Third and eight from the 22. Schwinnin is Gagne wide right. Three receivers left, Padupney behind him in the pistol. Throw coming, lobbing, end zone, man-to-man -man coverage, it's intercepted in the end zone. Just overthrew his man. It's picked off by Braylon Scalf, and a huge stop for the Jeff Cats as they force the first turnover of the game. They pick off Nolan Schwinnin. Incredible athletic play in the end zone there by Scalf. High points the football, makes a huge play for the Wildcats here with just 24 seconds left on the, on the clock here before halftime. Big time play by the senior defensive back. Just what the Wildcats needed there before halftime. I was looking for Nathan Ditto who was in the left slot. And if that ball was thrown a little lower, they have had him. Or good, a little more oomph on it. Good news here, Kevin. I see uh, Bailey. Bailey coming out of the locker room right here before halftime. That's that's fantastic. Huge news for St. John's. Make it Jefferson going into the second half, and they will down it, take a knee, and let the clock run all the way to the conclusion of this first half. And this game has been great to this point. The Jefferson Wildcats getting a late interception of Schwinnin, keeping this a one-point game as we head to the break. On the least famous recipe chicken scoreboard, St. John's leads Jefferson 21 to 20. More coming up from Champions Field at Stadium Park in a moment on WOSN. Champions Field at Stadium Park. It is a beautiful night for football this Saturday evening and finishing out week one of the high school football season here on WOSN. And it is a close one on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard. 21-20, St. John's leading Jefferson. Scoreboard served up by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Delphus and Wapak. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens. Kevin Peel alongside Corey Britton. Of course, the forlorn men's boys basketball coach. Thanks so much for joining us here tonight in the booth. And very interested to see where Coach Rarig goes from here. His team played so well, especially offensively, getting those three drives to score right out of the gate here tonight, but find themselves down a point. However, going into the locker room, you get that big interception of Nolan Schwinnin. You feel a little bit better about things, and you get the football to start the second half. It's time for the Jeff Cats to strike, you would think. Yeah, they had a lot of momentum in that first half. Hopefully you can take the opening kickoff here in the second half, march down the field. Regain that lead, regain a little bit of momentum, and hopefully set yourself up for some more fireworks here in the second half because we've had a bunch of them here in the first. Our third quarter made possible by Charles River in Spencerville, the premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. Jefferson, the home team this year, after being the road team, winning 28 to 14 in the first edition of the Delphus Bowl. They are down a point as the third quarter is set to begin. St. John's in the home visiting whites is moving left to right as you watch it in front of our WSN cameras. Kicked off for the second half, let's get to it. It should be a great one. From the eight, this one returned up the far sideline and Andrew Miller popped as he crosses the 25 and gets his way up 
near the 28-yard line. And that's where Trent Teeman, who had a great first half, will be back at it. This is a Delphus Jefferson offense that outdistanced St. John's, 212 to 188 in total yardage in that first half. And 74 of those 212 on the ground, 15 rushes for 74 yards for the Jeff Cats, 138 through the air from Teeman, and of course had a couple big plays, including the Carter Agner 74 yard touchdown reception as a big chunk of those yards. And Teeman will hand it off to Miller, he's going way backwards. Just blowing up that play instantaneously. St. John's able to get into the backfield and they have been able to do so with efficiency here in this game. Camden Schaefer, the senior, with a loss of four on the play for Miller. Great pressure there. Ethan Drucker Miller there also on the tackle for the Blue Jays and quickly the Wildcats behind the chains here on second down. A loss of four as they roll left and Teeman finds his man coming across the formation. That's a catch going out of bounds by Miller as he's hauled out by quarterback and of course defensive back Nolan Schwinnen and gets those four yards back through the air, third and 10. Good job of rolling the pocket, helping out with the protection against the Delphi St. John's Blitz by rolling that pocket out, giving team in a little bit more time, throws a strike for about four or five yards. Third down, 10 from the 28. Ball in the near hash, throwing team and hit as he throws, and it was a little high for the stretched arms of Clay Podubny. Was pass was deflected off, there. Deflected pass, and then it didn't reach its initial intended target over the middle, and it could be a three and out here for Jefferson. Good job by the Blue Jay defense to quickly get off the field. Almost a reversal there, how the game started. Jefferson came out defensively with a lot of fire there to start the ball game in the first quarter. Blue Jay switch, flipped the switch on him in a hurry there. Braylon Scalf to punt. Primary kicking duties here. They bring it to him and nearly get home. A mile up in the air. This is booted. Metzger will call for a fair catch at the 41. And St. John's will take over here with 11 one to go in the third. See what kind of adjustments Duffus Jefferson made there at halftime as St. John's really got that rushing attack going there late in the second quarter. The Power, power sweep led by uh, Schwinney running the football and Padubny being that lead blocker, pulling those, pulling those guards coming to the short side of the field. Let's see what kind of adjustments Jefferson can make to help help Seven. combat that problem. Oh, sorry about that, Corey. 17 for 117 in the first half. 6.8 yards per carry on the ground for the Blue Jays. Run. They look to keep that going in the second half. Penumney starts off with a great run and spun out of a tackle and has a first down brought to you by Union Bank, committed to you. And Clay Penumney instantaneously moving the chains, gained nearly 11. Big, strong, physical run downhill. Jefferson came after the football there and he just wasn't going to give it up. And they neutralized the run in a big way, those first couple drives the Jeff Cats did, but this is where I think the game started to shift and the Blue Jays started to get those longer drives. They were establishing the run game in that second quarter, finding success that way. Schwinnen looking towards the far sideline there for the call. First and 10 from near the 47. Schwinnen will hand it off. Padubny picking his way for, well, he's getting pushed forward here, but not for much to the 46, bottled up nicely there by the Jeff Cats. 64 Wetzel there on the on the attack, did a nice job of plugging up that hole, and got a lot of help from his interior lineman there to help him out make the tackle. Gave him one, maybe a tad more, second to long eight. Hard count there from the Blue Jays. Looking to that far sideline again. Went in three for seven, 71 yards. Didn't have a touchdown and an interception in that first half throwing yeah, the football. Run, run, He's gonna run, run this side. Schwinnen tried to juke out of a tackle. He's 
Taken really. down at the 43. Just got enough of them, Andrew Miller, to stop his progression. And they'll give him the 44-yard line, third and long. Multiple times as Andrew Miller came from that outside linebacker position and made a big tackle um, coming, up from, coming up from that position. And really nice job. And he's been on an island a couple times with uh, – Put put me and uh, Schwin Schwinnen and made big plays for the Jeff Cat defense. Third and seven to throw. Schwinnen down the field as a man out there. Oh, what a catch! Reaching up, Nathan Ditto got his paws on the football and made the catch at the 13-yard line for a 31-yard gain and a Union Bank first down. Excellent job by the Blue Jay offensive line. Jefferson brought the blitz. They picked it up nicely. Schwinn stepped up in the pocket and delivered a great ball, and Ditto made an excellent play, diving catch across the middle. In a game of highlight plays, it's just another. It's been a highlight reel contest here today. Eight and a half to go in the third. Schwinn taking a little extra time, although down to four ticks on the play clock. Trying to get the snap off, down to one, they just do. And up Padubny, trucking up the middle, Padubny to the end zone. For a touchdown for St. John's, and they've extended that lead to seven. Play Padubny rumbles in. Just like that, get the big play up the middle, and a one play after that, a big gaping hole up the middle. He finds it easily and rumbles into the end zone, and seven point lead for the Blue Jays. Big time drive put together there by St. John's, needing five plays. Come out of the locker room on a high note. The extra point up and good from Metzger. And St. John's has its largest lead of the game, 28-20 on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard. It's another touchdown presented by Leland Smith Insurance Services, your first call for all your insurance needs. And of course, Corey, we saw a lot of what we saw late in the second quarter on that first drive of the second half for St. John's. There will definitely be adjustments needed from Jefferson on the defensive side of the ball, but now is trying to reestablish that offensive rhythm that they had early on, that three and out, temporarily throwing them off. Still plenty of time to find it, but they're going to see if they can get some things going here on this next drive. Yeah, the biggest thing Jefferson needs to remind themselves, it's still a one-possession football game. Absolutely. Delphus to St. John's has scored two straight scores to make it to take the lead here, but at the end of the day, you need one drive here. You're down eight. It's one possession, one play at a time. Get a first down, get a little momentum established. March right down the field and tie this puppy up. Five play, 58-yard drive. Took two minutes and 36 seconds off the clock. And Padubny, the 13-yard touchdown run, capped the drive. Here's the boot, our sideline, Miller. Cuts back this way, Miller to the 20, and taken down at the 24. Andrew Miller with the return of 13. And the next drive for the Jeff Cats starts now from their own 24. Eight and 18 to go in the third. On that first drive of the half, a four-yard run, a negative four-yard run to start off for Miller. Four-yard catch to get that yardage back in completion. First three plays of the second half for Jefferson. Teeman. And gives it off and trying to come towards the near side and nothing doing. Agger, the ball carrier. Yeah, Carter Agner, of course, had a 74-yard touchdown grab earlier today. But no room for him to go along that left side. Camden, to stretch the play out. Camden Schaefer, again, from that middle linebacker position, did a great job of flowing to the football and getting there first for the Blue Jays. For Jefferson, too, you'd love to get Trent Tiemann in space. Made some nice plays in the run game along with the pass earlier. Winds up, throws this one. Agner's open, and he has the near sideline, and he's across midfield. 
not the run game this time. There's that great arm from Team and, and a great route from Agner. A Union Bank first down up to the 45-yard line. Beautiful ball. The linebacker tried to get underneath of it, and Team and put it perfectly on the numbers. Agner, great hands, was able to tighter up the sideline across the 50 all the way into Blue Jay, ter into Blue Jay territory to the 45-yard line. Huge play, just what the doctor ordered for the Wildcats. That's an efficient day for Carter Agner receiving two catches for 107 yards and a touchdown. Now team and taking off in the run game. He'll be hit hard, but pushed forward in the process by his opposite number, Nolan Schwinnen. And up to the 39, he goes for a gain of six on first down. There's that really nice misdirection again. They faked that jet sweep to keep the quarterback with the football, and Tiemann finds that nice hole, and they're ahead of the chains on second down here. That big pass play could open up a lot of things for Jefferson now offensively. Tiemann showing his arm off moments ago. And a nice six-yard gallop to start this set of downs. Agner is the back. On his right side for team and in the gun. Play clock down to three. Man in motion. Snap. Rolling. Throwing. Open. And he overlaid it. Near the 35. Incomplete. Intended for Miller. Nearest man in coverage was Nathan Ditto for St. John's. Third down and four. Tough play for team and as Schaefer and Schrader were coming hard off the edge there for the Blue Jays. He had to hurry that throw just probably a little bit sooner than he wanted to and just overthrew his intended target. You're saying just enough pressure? Just enough, right in his face and just didn't have that time to set his feet like he needed to. And that's why he overthrew it just a tad, third and four. Team and rolling. Now throws back behind some misdirection. Agner, one man to beat, gets by him. Agner to the 30. Agner out of another tackle and trucked out of bounds at the 17-yard line by Nolan Quinnen. A 22-yard gain. The misdirection works. There is a flag at the 24. And the Jefferson faithful not happy. It's going to be against them. And that includes Coach Rarig. I think we're going to get a dead ball personal foul penalty after the play, unfortunately. In fact, even Carter Agner from down on the field is urging the crowd to get a little loud and opposing this call. But we saw this last year, very emotional game. Two rivals, crosstown rivals. It's going, the intensity, you thought it was high in the first half. Boy, oh boy, is it gonna be another level in the second half. They'll march it off from the 24. It would have been a first down and goal well, first down at the 17, not goal to go, but first and 10 from the 17. Instead, they'll move it back to the 34 after that infraction. And they do not have it, a first down. It should have been a dead ball, so I believe it's still a first down. If it, if it, was, a, if it was a dead ball penalty, it would have been... So they moved the chains back to where it was at the 39. Remember, it was third and four, and then they had the completion. The penalty brings it back to the 34, the football. But yeah, still would be past the line to gain, even with the penalty. So Jefferson lost about 17 yards or so on the play from where it was, would have ended up, but still should move the chains in their favor. Coach Schulte asking for a bit of an explanation on the other side for the Blue Jays. Yep, there it is. There's the ruling, the first down. It's all in all, not your ideal scenario for the Wildcats, but you still do move the chains. You get a Union Bank first down to the 34. Coach Schulte still asking for an explanation from that side judge over there. Nonetheless, a big first down there by Jefferson. Keeps the drive alive here almost halfway through this third quarter. Fourth penalty of the game on Jefferson. All of them had been relatively minor penalties. A couple kickoff out of bounds, one false start. Now that's the what first What a wildcat look here. And it is. And coming outside, Teeman. And they went low to stop him. 
Uh, tackle made by Ditto at the 31. They actually put Andrew Miller there in the quarterback position, yeah, a little wildcat did. action. Gave team in a little bit of a break. Pardon me, Miller the carry for three. Just a little bit of a wrinkle on offense, trying to keep that Blue Jay defense on their heels. The Wildcats running the Wildcat. Sounds about right to me. But they are very explosive, different run schemes. Rolling right to throw, teaming. He's not going to throw, he's going to run, although he has a lot of opposition there. He's going to get taken down at the 30. Got hit hard. And we have a whistle here. At least initially they'd stop play. Looks like his helmet might have came yep. off. He was on that far sideline, so trying to gauge what exactly occurred out there. No gain. Tough, tough circumstance here. It looks like Tiemann's helmet might have came off on that far sideline. He's got to come out of the game here for one play on third down. That might. Well, you hope it doesn't take the pass out of play, although Jefferson can, down territory Jefferson here. can take a timeout if they'd like to and put him back in the game, but you would be burning a timeout halfway through the third quarter. Yep. Don't necessarily want to burn it if you don't have to here. Miller in the gun on third and seven. Rolling. Got away from pressure. Miller throws. What a catch at the 19. Going down to the ground. Braylon scalp a clutch play. The Union Bank first down. Union Bank committed to you. Gain of 12. That's one of the biggest 12-yard plays we've seen of the night. As a fellow coach, I get these rosters in the in my email, and there's a little C next to some names on a roster, and that is an a that is a perfect example of a captain stepping up for your team in a big situation. Third and six, Captain Andrew Miller rolls it to his left, throws a strike on a big third down, keeps a huge drive alive for the Wildcats. And teaming back in there, Miller dancing outside and down at the 15. Four yards for Miller. And slowly, you can start feeling the momentum a little bit, getting back on that Jefferson sideline and start feeling it a little bit more on this side of the field and putting a great drive together, keeping that Blue Jay offense that was a little clicking off the field. Teeman. Well, hand it off. Miller patiently. Miller and goes down at the 11. Bad news for Jefferson, a flag came from the far side and then another flag came in after the tackle was made. This is gonna be intriguing to sort out. And another one, I don't know if that was a mistake, but there's a lot of laundry on the field currently. And we also have the player down here for the moment on the far sideline. So a lot to sort out, but also most concerning a Blue Jay dinged up. So a holding call against Jefferson. We'll back up the Wildcats. Tough timing on that penalty for Jefferson. All the way back to the 27. But at least a 10-yard penalty on Jefferson there. And while the player's getting attended to, we will take a break. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard, St. John's 28, Jefferson 20 on WOSN. Our scoreboard is served up by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Delphus and Wapak. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens. 28-20, St. John's leading Jefferson. Now second and 18 from the 27-yard line. Now the timeout to throw. Team and fakes, pulls it down, and works his way up to the 25. And that could have been... Much worse, honestly, for team in there as he had a lot of traffic around him. At least found two yards out of it. And it's third and 16. Good coverage by the Blue Jays secondary there. Forced team in to pull the ball down and scramble and get what he could get there. And Jefferson 
Aiming to get positive yards on this play. Well behind the sticks. Potentially in go for it range here, four down territory. Rolling left, Teeman. Teeman will come near side and he's hit hard and dropped at the 27. Taken down by Clay Podubny, who lowered the boom. And that will go down as the second sack of the game for St. John's and a loss of three. Monster fourth down play here for the Jefferson Wildcats. And that clutch 12 yard completion from Miller to Scalf seems like an eternity ago now for Jefferson, fourth and 18. That holding penalty really just derailed, the, yeah. derailed the, the drive here a little bit. Let's see if they can't get the answer. But they've made big plays in the passing game already and there's a delay of game on Jefferson. Didn't quite get the snap off. It's gonna set him back five more yards. That St. John's sideline as loud as it's been on the opposite side here tonight. Two teams that are looking for success here. Jefferson looking to go over 500 this season for the first time since 2017. Last winning season for St. John's also 2017. Fourth and 23 team and lobs it out there incomplete. Closest receiver was Cody Bailey, nearly intercepted as well by the Blue Jays and they get the huge stop they were hoping for defensively. Really promising drive for Jefferson there, that holding penalty on second down just backed them up and they just couldn't, couldn't recover from it and St. John's gets the big stop and late third quarter here, they're gonna get the ball back with an eight point lead and Jefferson's gonna need a stop. And a lot of time coming off the clock there. Almost half the quarter, in fact, came off the clock on that series. And 13 play drive, no points though for Jefferson. Still plenty of time. 2.34 to go, third quarter. And the play clock running. A long look towards the sideline from Nolan Schwinnen. Their only drive of the quarter going two minutes and 36 seconds and down the field for six points. Now Podubny going to try and ride him to victory here. He gains just one as he maneuvered his way to the left. Great job by Tyler Wilkins, the junior defensive back for Jefferson to come up and really help out make that tackle from the secondary position. Second and nine from the 34. Schwinnen, hard count. Look to the sideline. Especially with St. John's moving the football in the ground game the way they have in this quarter and also in the second quarter. They can slow the game down to a crawl if they can continue to find success on the ground. Spadubny picks his way up to the 37. Three more. Vincent Murray there, along with number 60, 66, Jim Hastings. 62 Junior up front for Jefferson. Third and six. The receivers left, one to the right, man in motion now. It is Ditto. Schwinnen the throw, wheel, wheel. time, pressure, going down the field, open man, up the slot, and the catch made. Right down the middle, they found Braden Pullman for his first catch of the game. The sophomore got all alone for a Union Bank first down. Union Bank committed to you. A really, really nice route concept there by St. John's. They went with a wheel to a post, and that post, they almost got a little rub action there on the wheel post route. And Coleman number 18, or Pullman number 18, excuse me, found himself wide open and quarterback put it right on the money. I'm out of time for your first catch on a big third down. Under a minute to go, Podubny shuffling his way to the 24. 
And these are the types of runs he has been finding now for the last couple quarters. Patient, positive runs. That was an eight yard gallop. And it looks like St. John's is gonna let this one go to the fourth. There's about a two or three second difference, so they are able to send it to the fourth quarter. And it will be full of drama. Addition two of the Delphus Bowl, living up to the type. And St. John's leads Jefferson 28-20. Fourth quarter on deck on WOSN. Our fourth quarter is made possible by Charles River in Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. What a ball game. The second edition of the Delphus Bowl here at Champions Field at Stadium Park has been a phenomenal game. The Blue Jays leading the Wildcats by a score of 28-20. Kevin Peel, Fort Laramie basketball coach, Corey Britton with you here in the booth and our entire fantastic WOSN crew welcoming you back on a perfect night for Delphus. We escaped the rain a little earlier on before the game, stopping here between 5 and 5.30. And it's been a great night, a very comfortable night since. But it's about to get a little uncomfortable in this fourth quarter as we see how this one shakes out. St. John's, the visiting team in this year's game against Jefferson. Right to left, they move in the white attire. And Schwinnen able, able to escape a tackle. And a first down, a Union Bank first down to start this fourth quarter. As they move their way into the red zone once again do the Blue Jays. Schwinnen is that big physical runner you really got to break down and, and really have your feet set. And I don't think an arm tackle is going to bring him down in many games this year. Yeah, certainly not. At the 18. TJ works also in the backfield. And that's Pedubny. But he stood up in the middle. Jeff Katz sticking with him there, that defensive front collapsing in. Good job by Matt Wetzel there to get pressure. Make Padubny change his course a little bit to give the Wildcat defensive front a chance to wrap him up and bring him down. The running game has been the reason you could say St. John's is leading this game. It's gotten them down the field most of the way, but clutch passes all night from Schwinnen. Second and nine, he'll go to the air here. Down the middle, dangerous ball, and he came up with it anyway for the touchdown. What a throw into double coverage. And Ethan Druckmiller makes the catch for the touchdown. And it's 34-20, St. John's leading. If you're Delphus Jefferson, you, you can't complain about that coverage. Fantastic defense, just a better play by the offensive receiver. Sometimes you just got to tip your cap to the offense. He made a play there. Um, fantastic catch by the receiver. Extra point from Metzger, up and good. And St. John's continues to add on. They've scored 21 unanswered points in this game. 10.44 to play here in Delphus, 35-20 St. John's on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard on WOSN. Another touchdown brought to you by Leland Smith Insurance Services, your first call for all your insurance needs. And the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard is now 35-20 in favor of St. John's. And the kickoff. On that far side, Miller, and got out of one tackle at the 21. Miller cuts it back, leaps the defender, and goes down at the 32. Andrew Miller nearly able to pull away. TJ Wirtz had to make the stop. And a nice return for Jefferson, who needs some positive plays heading into the early stages of this fourth quarter. 
We have a cramp and a quick stoppage. We'll come back here on WOSN. Our scoreboard served up by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Delphus and Wampot. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens. Camden Schaefer was the St. John's Blue Jay down on the field with a cramp. Was able to hobble off, but that is a nice piece of this Blue Jays defense, not on the field at least for perhaps a couple plays. Now time to go to work for Jefferson offensively. They do! Teeman! A big gain! And down at the five! Oh, they just got him by the legs, and Carter Agner once again finds a lot of green in front of him in the passing game. Quarterback Nolan Schwinnen was the one who chased him down there. Incredible effort by him to, to save the touchdown. But another great ball by Teeman. And just like that, another big play by the Jefferson Wildcats. And they're knocking on the doorstep here, trying to get it back to a one-score game. Agner, of course, had the 22-yard catch that was essentially eliminated by a penalty, too. And he has had a huge night. Scalp, they fake it to him off the side. Teeman hoping to work his way in, and he's down to the one for the gain of five. They're going quick here. Yep. They liked what they saw. Teeman back in the gun in a hurry. Teeman. Touchdown, Jefferson. And a much needed score for Trent Teeman and the Wildcats. And they are working their way back to within a score. That was quick. Three play drive, way to answer here for Jefferson. Didn't waste any time after the Delvis St. John's touchdown, got the big pass. Two runs later, you're into the end zone and Scalf on to kick the extra point. Under a minute of time elapsed. Three plays, 67 yards in 53 seconds. And the extra point is up and it is through from Braylon Scalf. Potentially drilling a car out in the parking lot on the process. So teaming the score, he's had a big night, not just through the air, but also on the ground. Finds Carter Agner on a beautiful route down the middle, and he has just been a game breaker tonight for Jefferson in the pass game. Yeah, they had that trips to the far side of the field there, and I don't know if it was some kind of rub route, but Agner got wide open, streaking down the middle of the field between the hashes, and a great ball by team and hit him in stride, and was able to get down to the six. And two plays later, team and punched it in. And now it's up to the Jefferson defense to see if they can't get that stop. And they've had opportunities all night. They've gotten St. John's to third downs, but it's been off the field here. it's been Schwinnen with that third down pass. We just talked about it during the break, Kevin. We, he's thrown three passes in the second half. He's three for three. Yeah, three for three. How about that for efficiency? So they, they need to be able to get him off the field here, and they need they need to get pat, break up a pass here. Touchdowns are presented by Leland Smith Insurance Services. Your first call for all your insurance needs. Lee's famous recipe chicken scoreboard now 35-27. St. John's in the lead, but it's just an eight point game again. As we continue in this fourth quarter, make sure to catch an exclusive broadcast of the Allen County Fair Band Show on WOSN Tuesday at 8 p.m. or Saturday, August 27th at 10 on WTLW. We knew this quarter was going to be fun. It certainly has panned out that way. And still a ton to go in it. They're going to let this go out of bounds smartly. And that was a great kick. A carpet burner of a boot there from Jefferson. And went the out of bounds. Two previous times the balls went out of bounds. St. John's has elected for them to re-kick. And the last time it happened, Scalf kicked it through the end zone. And St. John's lost 15 yards yeah. out of that deal. So it'll be very interesting to see if St. John's just takes it from the spot at the 30 or if they make him re-kick. And it looks like Coach Schulte is going to have him take it from the 35-yard line instead of having him re-kick. So sort of learn their lesson from that last one. From Scalf. That was an impressive kickoff that made it all the way to the end zone for a touchback in the first half. First and 10 from the 35. This 
set of downs for St. John's. Two touchdown drives of two minutes, 36 seconds and three minutes, 50 seconds in the second half for the Blue Jays. And Nolan Schwinnen leading the way offensively. Hands off a Dubney, big run. Contacted before the chains, but not able to be dragged down until Trent Tiemann finally brings him to the turf at the 48. And a gain of 13 and a Union Bank first down. Union Bank committed to you. Good, good tone setter there on first down for the Blue Jays. That is just a business-like run for Podubny. Full head of steam in this second half. We have a whistle. Looks like we, we got some start. movement up front. Looks like the left guard there might have moved. And he sure did. And move it back to the 43. Fifth penalty of the night on St. John's. See if Jefferson can use that to their advantage there as they got St. John's behind the sticks a little bit here. Clock running. They like to take their time and use up play clock, especially with three point lead. They drop it to the left. A nice grab made. Ethan Ditto works his way up. A couple. Nice gain there for Ditto, got the yards lost on the penalty back, and then a little bit more. Gain six. Nice safe pass to start off the set of downs after the false start. Just to look to the sideline. Podumny behind him in the pistol. A little more time, down to three, down to two on that play clock. Hands off to Dubny. And he's going back after he oh. got a oh. oh, they came out with the football. Jefferson thought they had caused a fumble. And this is going to be a controversial call. He has gone all the way to the house, but they're going to bring it back. Official said it was dead on the field right at the 50-yard line. That was Matt Weitzel. He is standing at the goal line. They are telling him, nope, they're telling him to bring it back. It's going to be third and long, though. Jefferson's still in a pretty good situation, even though they don't end up with the football here. You don't think these fan bases don't want to win tonight? Oof. 55, Daniel Myers was there first to make the tackle. That was a two-yard run for Podubny that Jefferson was hoping turned into a strip and a fumble, but it was not to be. Third down and seven will be coming up. The clock stopped with 7.53 remaining. And this will be the third time here in the four, in the second half where Jefferson has gotten St. John's in a third and long, and each time Schwinnen has completed a big ball. So see if he can do it one more time here. What a game changer that would have been. Potentially tying the game, a strip of Clay Podubny. A return for a touchdown, but not to be. It's a defensive seven. lineman's dream. Yes. And he was the only one really reacting. The third and seven from the 49. You'll hear the banter from the Jefferson faithful below. Schwinnen to throw, steps up, Schwinnen. Outside he goes and has a Union Bank first down to the 40. Clutch run from Nolan Schwinnen. Didn't see what he wanted in the passing game and took it on the ground for nine. Big play from your senior quarterback. Keeps the drive alive for the Blue Jays. Now after Jefferson thought it was a tough call to go against him, have to find a way to get off the field. First and 10 from the 40. Oh, 
Clock stopped since he went out of bounds, and we have a timeout taken here by St. John's. With that 7.33 marker to go in the final quarter. We'll take a break as well. 35-27, St. John's on WSI. All first downs brought to you by Union Bank tonight. Union Bank committed to you. And season 18 of Sports Report starting this Friday night, 10 p.m. on WTLW. Join Patrick Kamler for a full hour of the most comprehensive football coverage around all season long, Fridays at 10 on WTLW. Lee's famous recipe chicken scoreboard 35 27. St. John's just picked up a big first down on the ground, courtesy of their senior QB, Nolan Schwinnen. And he's gonna hand it off to Podubny, and he's stopped right there after a gain of a yard. Tanner Verhees there on the tackle from the defensive end plate. Position did a nice job of standing up his blocker and still making a play from the defensive end. Now it's like he stood up his blocker and then went low on Podubny. And it's Almost in unison. Nice tackle made. Not even officially a tackle, just stopped him in his tracks. St stood him in up. The stat sheet. <laughs> yep, in the stat sheet, it'll count though. Second and nine. Wirtz and Podubny in the backfield with Schwinnen. And coming left side, Podubny shreds one tackle and another, and another. Podubny gone. For a touchdown. Oh, Clay Podubny just putting the team on his back. For the last three quarters, he has been a massive part of St. John's offensive success. And he gallops to the end zone from 39 yards out to push it back to a two-score lead. He was not going to be denied on that run, breaking multiple tackles there, tackles there on the way to the end zone and pushes this back to a two-score game. The bruiser, the finisher you hope to have at the running back position. Blue Jays certainly have an asset in their backfield. The PAT up and good from Metzger. And it is now a 42-27 lead for St. John's with 6.42 to go. Another touchdown presented by Leland Smith Insurance Services. Your first call for all your insurance needs. And we update the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard to 42 to 27. And Jefferson going to need another one of those drives like what we saw last time. Three plays, 67 yards in 53 seconds. Try and get down the field because time is becoming ever more a factor here against Jefferson. Correct, they do have three timeouts here, but you do need to move here relatively quickly. Um, same old adage though, doesn't take doesn't matter how long it takes you to score because if you don't score, the game's going to be in jeopardy to begin with anyway. So if it takes you four minutes to get into the end zone, it takes you four minutes to get into the end zone. That's the only way you can stay into the ball game at this point in time. So uh, first key is to piece together a drive and get that first first down and get the thing moving. How about this for an offensive performance in the second half for St. John's? First drive after they got a three and out. Five plays, 58 yards, and 236. Second drive of the half, seven for 67 and 350. Six for 65 and 259, this most recent drive, all touchdowns. Andrew Miller trying to make a play in the return game and he's taken down at the 20. A great kick there by the Blue Jays. And from their own 20, Jefferson will start this drive. 6.35 remaining. Trent Teeman and the Jefferson Wildcats. It's go time offensively. But the good thing that they have going for them today, so many big plays in the pass game. And they'll wind up and throw this one outside to Miller. Works his way out of one defender. Here goes Miller down the sideline. And he goes out of bounds. 
with a Union Bank first down committed to you up to the 43 yard line. Gain of 23 to start the drive. Great timing out there. Team and drop back. Miller on the out route, put it right on him as he broke out of the out of the pattern and was able to turn it up quickly for a big gain. And just like that, they're almost to midfield. And they're ready to go too. Team and rolling left, throwing and incomplete. Closest one to it was Miller streaking towards the far side and was out of his reach, threw it too far ahead of him. Second down, 10 coming up. Looking for that same out route concept there, just a little bit further down the field, rolling, rolling teaming out there to help against the blitz, helping the offensive line protect a little bit. And 10 from the 43. And in motion, fake team and rolls it out to the wide side. Scalf has some room and ducks out of bounds. Yeah. And Scalf up to the 48. Went low on him. So we've got an injured Blue Jay over there. Hopefully he's okay. It was great to see Cody Bailey return to the game earlier on in this half after the being the elbow stunk in the face mask. Hey, they got a guy down. But also along with that, a cramp, just a cramp for Schaefer. Haven't seen a lot of him though in these last couple series. You know, with St. John's having a man down, we'll take a break. 6.01 to go in the contest, 42-27 is the lead for St. John's on WOSF. TV44 and WOSN are nonprofit organizations supported by viewers like you. Now is a great time to make a donation of any size as a way to say thank you for this sports broadcast. Go to WTLW.com and click donate here. Donations are accepted 24 hours a day. Just visit WTLW.com. These famous recipe chicken scoreboard, 15 point advantage for St. John's. Jefferson with the ball near midfield. Hoping to find some points in a hurry. Teaming. Low to Miller, couldn't quite scoop it off the turf in completion, although it would not have netted much yardage. However, it is fourth and five. And Jefferson needs to make this conversion here. With time running low and every play being ever so precious. St. John's faithful getting loud on the far side. Hoping for redemption from last year's 28-14 loss to these Wildcats. Fourth and five. Team in to throw. Rolling right. Time. Open receiver. Catch made and ducking out of bounds. This Braylon Scout. You can rely on him to get open. And he does again. A Union Bank first down. A pickup of 13. Union Bank committed to you. Great job by the offensive line from Jefferson there to hold up and give Teeman enough time to work through his progressions and find Scalf along the sideline there. Big first down, keeps this drive alive and keeps this game alive. Had to have it, and they got it. First and 10 to the 39. Pressure, Teeman down the middle, and under through it, it's intercepted. Intended for Miller. Picked off at the 17 yard line by St. John's. And who else but Nolan Schwinnen. The QB making a play as a DB. And that could be the nail in the coffin tonight. Still time, but a huge play for St. John's. They get the defensive stop they were hoping for. Good idea by team in there. Just under threw it just a little bit. And Nolan Schwinnen made a big play for the Blue Jays when they needed it the most. And hopefully he's okay. He just jogged off the field there. Favor, and it looked like maybe a shoulder. We want to have a new quarterback in here for the Blue Jays. You're going to have to drag him off the field, though. There's no way he's going to come off without some resistance. Grant Holm. Yep. 
Uh, Ohm will take the snap here, hand it off to Podubny. Oh, Podubny, what a run. Now a late flag and another late flag. Podubny got up to the 36. An 18 yard run with defenders draped all over him the entire time. And Union Bank first down if the play stands. Might be in the area of face mask. And it was. Marching off that penalty from the 36, and that already moves it to the 49. That's a brutal penalty to go there against Jefferson. Eighth penalty on Jefferson tonight. And it already was a first down, but the field position improving as well. No Schwinnen back on the field this play for St. John's. They'll still have Ulm out there taking the snap. With Podubny and Wirtz in the backfield. Wirtz on his right hip. First and 10 from the 49. It's Podubny. Off right side. And a nice gain on first down of four yards. Chews up more clock as well. Carter Agner and Daniel Myers there on the tackle for the Wildcats. For Jefferson here, you just got to try to get a stop. Get the football back any way you can. Give yourselves a chance. That's the hope. Second and six. Home. And he's going to get some blockers and head his way up to the 43. And Coach Rary going to take a timeout. Really nice tackle there by Logan Murray there from the linebacker position. Flowed nicely to the football. They give him just one. Must stop coming up here for Jefferson on defense. Tonight's scoreboard served up by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Delphus and Wapak. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken where home style happens. 3.46 to go, third and five from the 44 coming up for the St. John's Blue Jays. And of course, a St. John's team that has not only this game, you knew this was going to be an extremely tough game against your crosstown rival at LCC next week, a regional finalist from last year. Then you go for sales, Marion Local. How about that for a start to your season? This would be a nice helper for them to get off to a strong start, but no doubt about it, they knew they had quite a climb to start this season with four opponents of this caliber to start. And they have answered the bell so far tonight. But the Wildcats not gonna go down without a fight. Big third down and five. And your starting QB not out there. Nolan Schwinnen, Grant Ulm, the signal caller. And keep it on the ground. Podubny has a first down. Podubny to the 35 for a Union Bank first down. A huge first down to churn more time off and move the chains. Got nine on the play. Really nice patience by Podubny there. Taking the handoff right up the middle. Found a nice little hole. And again, he's done it all night long. Was able to just drag a few people, found the opening. and. Execute for a huge, huge first down for DSJ. Another Union Bank first down. Union Bank committed to you. And honestly, Corey, I felt like they had good pursuit into the backfield. Like Jefferson had gotten some push, but Podumney picked his way through. And he'll do so again here on the ground to the 31. Four more yards for Podumney. 
especially considering the way Jefferson defended the run in that opening quarter, you didn't know if St. John's was going to be able to get the momentum they wanted to to develop the run game the way they were envisioning tonight. It took some time, took some patience, but they've been able to churn out the yards they've wanted to on the ground, take up some clock, and most importantly, move the football with efficiency. Very physical running attack tonight. Certainly. They've been staying in between the tackles for the most part. Rom went the wrong way there, I yeah, think. Yeah, a little miscommunication. Everybody pulled one way, and unfortunately, he went the other. <laughs> you know, Coach Schulte saying left, not right there. Zig, not zag. Young quarterback getting <laughs> pushed into the fire here on opening night. Um, I have a feeling you probably didn't get many reps on two a days when you're just trying to get everybody on the same page. Opening week, trying to get all your I's dotted and your T's crossed. So to 23 to play, 42, 27 advantage. And Louise famous recipe chicken scoreboard. Another big third down. Jefferson trying to get off the field. And prolong their efforts to mount a comeback. First down here, though, does some serious damage to Jefferson's hopes. Wildcats now with just one timeout remaining. And 2.23 left on that clock. Alm still the QB. Works on his left side. Pistol formation. But up knee, the tailback. Six yards to gain. Padubny has it. And more. Padubny down to the 20. And I think he, nope, he didn't quite stay in bounds, but uh, Union Bank first down on a pickup of 10 yards. The most important situation for St. John's there as they try to run this clock down to zero. Another right up the right side there, I think. St. John's found something mid-second quarter off the right side of their offensive line and have stuck with it for the majority part of that night. And again, just like the previous third down, they went right back to that right side. And um, he did a nice job of picking his hole, being patient, and found it. And another big, big, big DSJ first down. First and 10 from the 20. And now Ulm has sprung for another Union Bank first down. Inside the 10, down to the 9. After an 11-yard run for Podubny, 11 for Ulm. He didn't shy away from any contact there. He lowered his head and wanted the extra couple yards there. Now, this is where maybe it gets a little interesting for St. John's. You can potentially run the clock out here with Jefferson having just one timeout. Coach Schulte. Telling the offense to hold up for just a bit. Down to five. And we'll take the snap. Hand it off, Padubny. Oh, worked his way out of there. Padubny's still going, and he has one more touchdown. Looked like he had no chance to spring anything there, and then just like that, darted to his right, circle back to the middle. A nine yard score and just icing on the cake for St. John's on what has been a tremendous offensive showing for them here today. Jefferson had him stacked up at the line, but he kept his feet moving, kept fighting and bounced off a tackler and muscled his way into the end zone one more time tonight. Extra point up and through. That one made by Barry Gonzalez, the senior. Knocks it through, 1.09 to go. And the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard, 49-27 in favor of St. John's. Touchdowns presented by Leland Smith Insurance Services. The first call for all your insurance needs. Oh, it's a rivalry game. On a beautiful, beautiful facility, a facility shared by both these great programs. Very emotional game, as you would, would expect. 
was last year. Jefferson getting the 28-14 win. Part of their season, a big highlight of their season. St. John's for them is a big down point for them. A frustrating loss. What was a three and seven campaign? Both these teams, as we mentioned earlier, looking for their both first winning season above 500 since 2017. And especially with the schedule upcoming, St. John's starting the way they wanted to. Jefferson tonight, they fought tooth and nail, but it just seems like Clay Podubny and that offensive line just eventually wore him down on the offensive side of the ball and that D-line, which they got good penetration all night, just could not make the tackles they needed to. Yeah, they got the spots they wanted to, just couldn't finish the plays. I mean, a lot of third downs um, in this game where St. John's was facing a third and long and Jefferson just couldn't get off the field. I, I think Coach Rarig will uh, look at this tape and uh, see some, a lot of positives from tonight from his Wildcats and fix a couple things and and hopefully find themselves in good shape when they head up to Ayersville next week. Andrew Miller will get taken down on the return up to the 22-yard line. Andrew Miller in final possession here for Jefferson. Now we already highlighted the upcoming schedule, which is going to be a brutal one for St. John's, make no mistake with the games they have on tap at LCC next week. Followed by Versailles and Marion Local. And then of course, as Corey just mentioned, Ayersville next for Jefferson. Columbus Grove is week four for Jefferson. Of course, Grove has captured at least a share of the NWC title last four years. And off up the middle, up to the 30 yard line. Carry for Agner. But one of those players that came on, not out of nowhere, but I'm really excited to see where Agner goes going forward, just how explosive he was in space today, finding his way open on numerous big occasions. Helping Jefferson get some points. He's going to chew up some. Late statistics in this game, a nine yard run. And one more Union Bank first down. Union Bank committed to you. Jefferson will start the season 0 and 1, and St. John's off to a 1 and 0 start. Very well played game by both teams. A lot of athletes on both sides. Now St. John's turn to celebrate the Blue Jays avenge last year's 28-14 setback here at Champions Field at Stadium Park. And they win 49-27 over the Delphus Jefferson Wildcats. A great game. Pulled away later on did St. John's. And if you look at this game, it was 20 to 14 at one point, 35 to seven. St. John's outscoring Jefferson the rest of the way. But numerous spots, the Wildcats had their chances, just couldn't quite capitalize the way they wanted to, especially when they had the first three drives of the game go in their favor for touchdowns. That's the type of offensive execution you're hoping for if you're Coach Rarig but they just couldn't quite sustain it tonight. Still a lot to build off of for Jefferson. No, you definitely saw their big play capability offensively. They have a lot of athletes. The um, team did a great job at quarterback. I know Coach Rare said that him stepping in, they wouldn't miss a beat, and they sure didn't tonight. He stepped in and played very well. And defensively in spots, they did a nice job as well. They got St. John's into a lot of third downs. They just couldn't get off the field when it mattered the most. Especially with the gauntlet coming up for St. John's, how big of a win is this, Corey, for the Blue Jays trying to build momentum for this season, which is always challenging, playing in the MAC, but chance to at least start 1-0, and and they did that this week. It's a, it's a huge win. Anytime you can start your season 1-0, and uh, gives you a huge boost of confidence, and I know they have another big rivalry game with LCC next week. I know that's a, that's a big game for them on their schedule as well, and and it, gives, and it gives them a shoot of confidence. And three win season last year is undelphus like, undelphus St. John's like. And tonight they take a huge step forward of uh, 
riding that ship, and, and they're playing really good football. I was really impressed with the physicality up front. The uh, quarterback running back combination is is going to be tough for people to stop. What a win tonight! It was fun working with your partner Corey Britton, doing a phenomenal job on the color commentary tonight. Our WOSN hardworking crew, thanks you for tuning in, and I am Kevin Peel. A big win for St. John's as they gain redemption from last year's loss in the Delphus Bowl, beating Jefferson by a final count of 49-27. Thanks so much for tuning in to this presentation of high school football on WOSN. Good night, everyone.